Hello! Welcome back, nice to see you for the first episode of the brand new season. Um, we are coming to you from the training ground, having a look at how all the preparations for another year in Sky Bet League One have gone. It's a new season with the same name. Welcome back to Bean with the Shot. Bean with the Shot! It's absolutely classic, isn't it? We are coming off probably the hottest week of the year, and this is the day we choose to record at the training ground. Anyway, we press on, as are these lads behind me. You can see them doing their final bits of warm-up as they get ready for one of the last days of pre-season training. Uh, let's find out how the rest of preparations have gone over the last few weeks and get some friendly match highlights. The chair boys got their pre-season underway with a 1-1 draw at National League side so Barnet. Trial SCM1, also known as Jacob Gardner-Smith, of course, netted the last-minute equaliser. Four days later and we were back on the road for the trip to Woking. Alex Samuel put the visitors 1-0 up after heading home Jack Grimmer's cross before Woking came back to lead at the break. Charles Phillips' bullet header fired the chairboys level before once again, right at the death, the game was flipped on its head when Akin Fenwa secured the 3-2 win. Then football was back at Adams Park for the visit of Brentford. After some great work on the right, the new signing Paul Smith provided the cross for the trialist striker to tuck home. Moments later and the chairboys doubled their lead. Jamie Maskell picking out the big man in the area to powerfully head home. Two goals either side of the break for the Bees meant the match finished level. An action-packed evening at Wealdstone was the penultimate game of the pre-season. And with just a few minutes on the clock, Scott Cashcott picked up a great through ball from Nick Freeman to fire beyond the Stones keeper. Chairboys had a great chance to double their lead when Smith was hauled down in the area. Up stepped Jason McCarthy on his final appearance for the club, but a superb reaction saved from Joe Ringer denied him. It's been a summer of change here at Wickham, uh, with the Kuhig family coming along, investing into our team. So I thought we'd get to know Pete. Pete Kuhig, Pete, I mean, thanks so much, man. Um, you picked the right summer for her, I think. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been too hot lately. I was ready for some English weather. We got it this morning. Um, let me just take you back then to January the 1st, 2019, what, seven months ago now. Uh, talk me through how you got involved with the club, why we're here now, uh, your family's um, investment and role with the team at the moment. Uh, well, it wasn't seven months ago for us. It was uh, more like a month and a half, two months ago. Um, everybody knows out there, we, we actually went through the process with Yova last year. Uh, I got sent over for due diligence. Things didn't go so well during due diligence. Uh, and we... You know, we had to take a repricing approach to the acquisition if we were going to acquire it, and, and, and things just kind of fell apart at that point. Uh, once that kind of became public, uh, a number of clubs contacted us, um, one of which was, was Wickham, and uh, it was an easy choice out of, the, out, of the, out of the different choices that were out there. Let me ask you more about that then. Why was it such an easy choice? Um, uh, why are the Wanderers your home now? Uh, the football side of the business. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we, we know we can do is improve the business side of the business. And the football side of the business is, is, is obviously the most important component. Uh, the Wanderers have Gareth in charge, Dabo second, uh, and about the best locker room I think I could possibly imagine on the professional level. So uh, from that perspective, it was easy. Um, it was also a very unique opportunity to, to become involved with uh, a supporters trust owned team and uh, uh, which is very appealing to us because that the community is such an in integral part to any football club in England uh, 
that it was kind of exciting. It, I mean, it's a it, it, the deal has risk because obviously 75% of the group has to approve us, uh, but if we do what we think we can do and the 75% come along, uh, it's just the exact type of partnership we want. Let me talk to you about the passion of the club then, because I mean, you said yourself, you've only been here uh, a month, month and a half, two months maybe. Three weeks, four <laughs> weeks, uh, I can't even keep up now. Uh, you know, it's long days and long nights, but it doesn't feel like work. But it also doesn't help me count the days. <laughs> so, I have no idea how long I've been here. <laughs> so what is it about this club that's got you so kind of passionate and so involved within within two months? I mean, you're wearing the shirt. You can see there. We're here at the training pitch uh, with a whole raft of new signings behind yep. us. Uh, Pete, what is it for you uh, that's kind of helped you buy into the love of the club? Well, I grew up um, playing soccer, football uh, at a at a at a pretty high as a, at about as high a level as you could in the United States. So. I've always been, um, the reason I was so attracted to the game was the team concept. And so uh, we were never going to come into a club where we didn't just completely embed ourselves in the culture. Uh, and, it, and it's been really easy here because the culture is so great, the community is so uh, open and accepting so far that it uh, feels pretty natural to wear the gear. Let me very quickly talk to you. Uh, you can't mention that you used to be a player quite, uh, quite a high level of soccer in the States without me getting a firm yeah. grip on the type of player you were. So, um, position? Striker. What type of striker? Are you a tall target man, you know, bruising everyone off for like uh, Akin Fenwa, little nippy one like Samuel? Kind of a mix between the two, probably closer to Alex. Uh, two footed, scored. Yeah, goals every game. We uh, won't put a number on that. No, no, lots of goals. Uh, I uh, enjoyed scoring goals a lot. Uh, but I also uh, was was the type of was a lot like uh, Bayo in the fact that I, I really and I've taught my boys this: assists are just as important as goals, especially if you're a striker giving assists. Uh, it just to me that the ability to 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 share the ball and be selfish at the, at the at the appropriate times, you know, helps you balance out up top. We mentioned uh, a raft of new signings behind us just earlier on. Uh, we're recording this on the day we've just finally announced Fred coming back to the chair, boys. Talk to me about <laughs> your role in in, in the uh, new talent that we've got here with look, us. Uh, our role right now, and we've told everybody this, is that we are really, really, really focusing on the operation side of the business. Now, obviously, Trevor and Gareth bring us in, you know, into the conversations, but one of the reasons that we're, we feel very comfortable with the club right now is that we have the ability to focus on the business side because Gareth has such a good handle on it, and Trevor really helps him out on that side. Uh, I think they're a really good partnership on, I mean, and, and it's proven, you know? We're, uh, the McCarthy-Fred deal was very, very difficult to pull off. I mean, you're really talking about uh, three different clubs that had to come together on an agreement. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm like everybody else. Uh, it's sad to see Jason McCarthy go. He's one of our better players, but even before, you know, in the conversations that Rob and I had about our approach to this, um, we understand that players have aspirations, and, and, and Jason wanted the challenge of championship football this year. Uh, he's, he's, he's gone at it before. Uh, didn't take the first time, felt as though he proved he deserved another chance. And uh, it was just kind of a great situation where Jason could find an opportunity at Millwall uh, to compete and we could get Fred to come home again, you know, because uh, I think I think the stats show that Fred has been more comfortable as a wanderer than, than, than anywhere else. Uh, even though he's, he grew up in Millwall, I think he feels at home here. And so it was, um, it was a no-brainer that we wanted to get done uh, from both perspectives, but uh, it wasn't easy to pull off. Well, we're delighted to have him back. But lastly, just before the deluge really does hit us, I know that aside from football, you and Gareth share another passion, music. Rock and roll. Pete, talk to me. What's on your playlist right now? Uh, well, um, we're, we're very similar. We have very similar tastes in music. We're, we're, we're pretty close to the same age uh, and kind of grew up on that rock and roll front uh, during, the, during the 80s and the 90s. So uh, we're definitely working on a new playlist that will maybe, you know, maybe include more of the old rock and roll classics than uh, most stadiums nowadays. But 
you know, we we also realize we have a wide breadth of fans, so we're going to bring um, a little bit different music to it, but hopefully some, you know, bring some more classic songs into it. We put a we put a playlist together for the first halftime against uh, Brentford. Uh, you know, we one of the things that I'm working on right now is uh, improving the sound at, at Adams Park. Put a, put on the new playlist, and it was actually a little bit difficult to hear. We might have to jack it up for the next game. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely want to bring a little bit a little bit more uh, a little bit more rock and roll to the music at Adams at Adams Park for sure. Amazing rock and roll football is back. Well, thank you. So, I mean, you've picked the perfect English summer, Pete. Thank you so much, man. Cheers. No problem. Beam in the shot. So after all the talk, all the speculation online, he's finally here. Freddie's back. Three years as a wanderer. It's so good to be sat next to you, Fred. Mate, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I just trained to get tired, but everything's good. Uh, we, we've been online, we've been on Twitter, we've got uh, questions from the fans. I'm going to rattle through some of that, so okay? That's cool. Uh, number one, this is, oh, we'll go with Nathan, best mate in football. In football? I want to say the wrong name and then people say... M maybe stick to one that's at Wickham just, just to be nice to your new teammates? At Wickham? Nah, no, this will get... Nah, no, nah, no, I'm thinking. Um... Have you got like the biggest address book ever? No, I'm, I'm <laughs> trying, trying to through them say... All. Best mate in football, I would say either um, Marlon Romeo that was at Mill or Iberi that was here. You know, Iberi Eze, yeah. Yeah, so, Wickham yeah. legend, Eze. Uh, here we go, so this is from Sam. How much of an influence has the gaffer Ainsworth had on your career? Uh, massive. I think with him, he, especially for young players as well, he just he makes you go to that next level like, of producing, and I can't thank him any much more than that. So, yeah, he's good at. at getting the best out of players, I think, personally. Um, well, just taking you inside that very quickly, uh, how does he do it? Is, is it in the dressing room, in the dressing room, is it on the training pitch? I think he's just a positive person, so it's just him in general. So every, every day he's energetic, positive, and it just reflects on every player, so. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll check you in right at the proper like deep end of it now. Um, uh, who says, why, this is Ben, why is Wickham so special to you? This is your third <laughs> day, or will be your third day of you here at the club. Uh, why do the chair boys hold, have such a hold over you? Um, well, firstly, I've, I've always done well and felt at home here, but it's just like, we're just unpredictable. Like, even last season with the games, we were losing, was it 3-0? And then we came back 4-3, like, things like that. Beam in the shot! You're, you're always going to get that Wickham, like, just unpredict uh, unpredictable. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Just um, being unpredictable, and it's just special here. Like, everyone gives it their all, and, yeah, so that's what I like about this club. Uh, I know this is your first day here at the training ground, so you haven't got to know all your new teammates just yet. Uh, but here we go. Connor says, which teammates are you most looking forward to playing with? Which teammate? Well, I would say, obviously, Akin Fenwell, because like, just seeing some, some of the things he does on the pitch, is just I find it quite funny, because 
defenders try their hardest just to like try to get the ball and sometimes he just chests it down in my head I'm laughing but I'm just like it's just funny some of the things he does well let me ask you more about that then what's it like to play with a guy that has to take out two or three <laughs> defenders um, and, and just leaves you with acres of space what's that like for a quick player like you oh it helps because as well like he's he's good on the ball as well so once I can pass him the ball get the ball back and just like he just attracts players there so I have more space and and I think that's when I'm at my best when I have space. Uh, right, let's crack through some more of these. Uh, Chairboy Central, which is a brand new Twitter fan account, by the way, uh, who asks, who's your favourite Fred, fictional or real? Uh, Fredo, if that counts, the chocolate bar. 10p a chocolate bar, it's everyone's favourite <laughs> Fred, I think. It's not 10p anymore, you know. What is it now? I think 15, I think, or 20. Oh, state of the world, eh? Boris is Britain. Right, here we go. Uh, favourite Wickham goal, this is from Tom. I would say the one I scored when I was when I was here the first time against Carlisle, I think, away. Was that the impossible angle one? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And I was so tired, I just remember that. I didn't celebrate that game because I couldn't bother to just run. Come on, it's a long drive home, let's get back. Uh, this is uh, Ethan, favourite hobbies outside of football? Um, I like chilling and playing FIFA, so something simple. Uh, who are the team that you play with on FIFA? Oh, I use Liverpool or PSG. Uh, do you sign yourself whenever you're on career mode? No, I don't do that. No, that's a rookie thing to do. Uh, uh, this is George. We'll do a couple more. George says, what's your favourite flavour milkshake? Oreo milkshake. Okay, yeah. Do you like Oreos on their own? Not. It's okay, but it gets a bit too much on the teeth and that, so... <laughs> so they need to be churned up. Yeah. Uh, right, this is lastly, this is from uh, Jack Dennis, who asks uh, the most important question. What's your favourite cheese, Fred? Do you know what's so funny? I don't like cheese. No cheese at all? <laughs> no, I don't like cheese. Um, right, what's your favourite cheesy song then? Cheesy song? Um, what's, what's that, um, that song with, like, with, like, babies? I don't know, but... I don't know, but I'm loving your version of it. You know? Right? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Uh, well, it's amazing to have you back yeah. in the Lion Dark Blue. Uh, yeah, can't wait to see what you come up with. Fred on your dinner, come on! Thank you. Beam in the shot! First of all, David, welcome to Wicked Wanderers. How's your first uh, few days been? Yeah, good. Yeah, um, you know, the, the first moment I arrived, everyone's been been really welcoming, really friendly. So, yeah, it's it's a really nice start, and I already already feel at home here. So, yeah. Made the move from QPR. Obviously, the manager, uh, former QPR player, and. Uh, caretaker manager as well. How much of an influence did uh, he have on uh, making the movie? Yeah, I mean, obviously come come across uh, Gareth over the years, like playing for for Exeter, um, and you know asked around quite a few people that you know that have played for him and you know Q QPR people, and and everyone has good things to say about him. So yeah, that was you know that was that was an easy easy decision in the end. Scored the goal that um, earned MK Dunn's promotion back to League One. Uh, how was that season for you? It's great to be part of a successful team. For sure, yeah. No, it was a bit of a, a bit of a strange season, really. You know, being at Portsmouth for the first half of the season, um, great club, and you know, unfortunately, I didn't didn't get the minutes on the pitch that I would have liked. Um, but you know, we're part of a successful team, and then going to MK and playing playing more regularly, um, and like you said, you know, being being a part of of getting promotion was 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 great like especially you know being at exit previously and being so close to to getting promotion there like it was nice to sort of tick that off like in the end and you had that time with Portsmouth like you said in league 1 back in league 1 now and it's almost like you kind of can make the stake as a league 1 player here yeah yeah no that's that's definitely an ambition of mine like I I've played you know obviously a few games at this level but um, I'd like to have you know a few decent seasons at this level, and you know, you know, get get some appearances under my belt. Some big matches early on as well. Bolton on Saturday, and then your former club MK Dons. Uh, not too far after that, it is a league that can be quite competitive, and um, there's some big teams that have dropped down from the championship. Yeah, yeah. If you look on the face of it, you know, there's some some big names in in the league, um, but you know, from the experience that I had, you know, last year and you know most years of my career, that doesn't always follow to. To how games games pan out, so I think every every game we've got to 
you know, we obviously will prepare the best that we can and, and we, we fancy ourselves to, to get points. We saw on your highlights reel you can score goals with both feet and, and your head as well. So how kind of, what kind of a player would you describe yourself as? Um, I would say like I'm quite a, a direct like winger slash forward, um, you know, uh, like generally hard working for, for the team um, and just yeah you know, like like to get in the box whenever whenever I can and, and chip them the goals. And so, like I said a minute ago, Bolton on Saturday, um, obviously you must have sympathy with the situation there, um, but just looking for them three points out on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've been I've played for. You know, the clubs in the, in, the, in the past where you know off the pitch things have been been you know very very turbulent and it's it's a pretty uncertain position to be in and and obviously as a club and as a fans it's you know you, you've got to have sympathy for them um, but I mean it doesn't when on a on a Saturday it doesn't doesn't really make it make a difference as soon as, as soon as the game starts you know you're still playing against eleven like decent footballers like and on 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 any given day you know. You know, a team can can bring bring a good performance. So, you know, we've got to t we've got to take it take it very very seriously, as you know we would anyway. But you know, there's no we can't take anything for granted just because things off the pitch are not going so well at the moment. And that is it for the first episode of Being With The Shot of the brand new season. The boys are all getting ready for the first game at home to Bolton this Saturday, Adams Park. You've got to make sure you're there. Uh, and we will see you soon with another episode. Remember to follow Wickham on all of our socials. Keep updated with everything that we're doing on there. And give us a like and give us a follow uh, on here as well. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you soon. Come on the chair, boys. Beam in the shot!